Hi folks, last week we made this 5C collet. Let's finish this job up, which is to make this hardened arbor for this beautiful hardened horizontal mill. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So as you can see here, this guy area right here is the 5C collet. Um, the cross hatching here would represent, I believe, the mill itself. Uh, and we've got a variety of dimensions. Go ahead and screenshot this or print it out because I'm probably going to, I've got it printed out on my desk and I'm probably not going to refer back to this drawing a lot during the video. I also have not practiced this, so if I make some mistakes, you're going to have to forgive me. Let's rock and roll though. Um, first thing I want to do, and I don't know whether this is the right thing or not, but I kind of want to get rid of the factory collet just to clean it up because I only really want to have my new part in here. Before I just delete it though, remember when we did the sketch, uh, let me right click on that sketch here and edit it. You can see we've got these purple lines. Purple lines mean um, they're linked back to that factory collet. That, that's the exact thing I want to get rid of. So it's, it's sort of not fair. You can't tell Fusion, hey, I want to delete something when that thing that you want to delete is what gave you this purple line. So what we can do is drag a box around everything, right click, oops, and say break link. That should turn them all blue. And uh, blue means you can drag them around. Well, that's not good. I know this is a good design or geometry. I don't want it to move. So same thing, drag a box around it all. And then see this constraint called fix. I click that. They all turn green, which means they are locked. Now that guy is still purple. Uh, if I right click, maybe delete the coincident. I'm trying to get rid of it. We'll see. Uh, stop sketch. So I'm still good. My thing's still there, no errors. Let's see now, can I right click, delete? See, it says it's referenced by other features. Do you want, it shouldn't be though. Um, hit yes, it gives me this error. I, I think we're okay. Anybody have any idea as to, oh, here, the body's still there, delete that thing. Um, anyone have any idea why? I'm not too worried about it, but it bothers me that it's not clean because clean is good and fun. So. Let's get onward here. This collet has, let's assume it gets extended out an eighth of an inch from a normal 5C. It's got this one inch shaft that comes out about five inches and change, a thread relief, a thread, a flat area, and a taper. So let's fix our collet here first. Let's go back into the sketch. So let's say that it's, if this is the normal end of a collet here, okay, let's hit T for trim. Let's turn that away. So now I can say L for line. Ooh, didn't want to do that. L for line. There we go. What happened there? And I can just drag this out. Now see how I'm going way further than the one eighth of an inch? It's because I don't care about the dimension right now. I'll come back and dimension it. I'll drag up and see I don't get a natural intersection point, but if I come over here and just let my mouse hover, now I can snap back and it gives me that point and boom. So see this little uh, right angle? That is what you see right here, which is a perpendicular joint. So that's always going to stay square, which is important. Now I can hit D for dimension, click this, oops, D for dimension, click this, and I'll say 0.125. So that's as extended out this, assuming I'm making this assumption that this part needs one eighth of an inch longer than a normal 5C. Hit stop sketch. It's not there. That's because I've got to right click on my revolve, edit feature, hold the control key, and that's going to let you add this profile to the selection that gets revolved. Click OK. Boom. We are done. Now, this arbor is all one piece so it's one component so let's go ahead and do it all in one that means i'm going to go back to this sketch right click edit and let's go so i need a one inch actually if we take a look the bottom piece is 8.312 from here all the way to the end so l for line i'm going to start here 
And I'm going to come over. Let me get this dimension out of the way so we can see better. So this section here should be 8.312. Cool. And let's just work our way back. We're going to come, the diameter here is 0.492. So L for line, click up, D for dimension, 0.492 divided by 2 because we're working in radius. There's some way to change the unit mode so you're defaulting to radius, but I don't like doing that because I it just that's weird to me. 246, and it's coming over 1.345 to 625. So L for line. Just create a line. Don't care where it is. Now you could also, we've got the angle here, but I don't know. I would rather type in these numbers and go to a three decimal place angle, just how I think. So it's 1.345 over. So that point to say this point is 1.345. And at this point, this dimension to here is. 0.625 divided by 2. So 0.625 divided by 2. Now in theory, not in theory, in practice, we should be able to create, uh, looks like that 5.632 is, is that what's called an included angle? It's both of them together. That's one reason why I don't do angles because I don't really just, I don't know, I don't know this stuff. Click here, click here. So that's giving me this 90, 92.8 would mean it's really 2.8 and 2.8 times 2 would give me the 5.623 so that passes my sniff test uh, straight walled section is 468 long so L for line see it's not is now it's getting weird because it wants to carry on that angle so don't even worry about it create it incorrect so it sh should be parallel and I'll click horizontal vertical I'll click on it and now that locks it in straight and we said it was 0 0.468 0 0.468 and from there I go up to a 7 8 by 9 thread so L actually let me move this away a little move it under L I'll come up and it goes over some and then back down actually I'm just going to finish up the rough nature of this that way I can come back and dimension everything and this just intersects right there so this one here is uh, see here this well actually it's interesting it's 1.312 including the core eighth inch thread relief so I'll type 1.312 minus the 0.125 so this is where things start to get crummy because that what, see what happened is I ended up moving this over to here, which looks funny. So let's just fix it by going making that way too long. Makes it easier, in my opinion, to create CAD sketches like this. Dimension this, which was the 1.312 minus 0.125. So again, I know that the thread, the front of the thread, all the way to the back of the thread relief is the 1.312. So minus the thread relief gives us that uh, 1.187. This is the 0.125, and this here is seven divided by eight for seven eighths thread divided by two because we're working on the radius. Perfect. And this is half an inch because it's a one inch diameter arbor, 0.5. And that actually is most of the work. How about that? Stop sketch. Obviously didn't show up because I've got to right click on my revolve. Edit feature. Hold down control once. Click that. Click OK. There's my arbor. And all I've got to do, we could model the threads. Create thread. Click on this face adjust the designation or size to be uh, 7 eighths by 9 and that's actually left hand Ooh, that's interesting it's not something you see every day see the LH there for left hand thread UNC LH so UNC LH click OK 
And there is our 5C Hardinge Horizontal Mill Arbor. So I hope you enjoyed that, uh, folks. Hope you learned something. If you did, I appreciate the thumbs up and commenting below. Otherwise, take care. See you next Friday.